Limit Padgi from Bali. My brother and I are off for a ride from Semyak to Changu. So I thought I'd use the time to show you a few key sights on the way, but to also to talk to you about renting and riding a scooter in Bali. As you see, and as you probably know, it's definitely the quickest way to get around. Roads are pretty quiet right now, so there's not much traffic. There's my bro. And, and it's, it's definitely the quickest way to get around, unless you get lost all the time like I do. However, first off, and this is probably the most important piece of information I can give, if you've never ridden a motorbike before, then Bali is probably not the place to learn. Over the many years I've been coming here, I've seen numerous tourists get into some quite serious accidents and end up hospitalised or even worse. Now that's not to say you shouldn't give it a go. If you are a novice, then just use your scooter for very short trips, like going to the beach from the hotel or just down to the shopping areas, the restaurants, whatever you like. But just little short 5-10 minute trips, you'll get used to it, get used to the traffic and you'll learn pretty quick. On the legal side, you probably won't even be asked by uh, for a driver's license from the people renting you the bike, but you will need an international driver's license should you get stopped by the police. And in all those years that I've been renting scooters, I've only been stopped by the police twice, and both of those stops were on long journeys, where I was stopped many miles outside of Ubud or on the way to the, uh, Mount Batur or something like that, Agung, and I was stopped on the open road. Both cases, the cop just wanted money. The last time was a long time ago, and I just had 200,000 rupiah tucked away behind the license I keep in a little folder. That's about $20 Australian. Yeah, hand over the little folder with the license in, and it always comes back less the cash, and then you're on your way. Now, if you're going to rent a bike for just a week or two, well, hang on a minute, we're just going to go past a ceremony, they're getting ready for some big ceremony here. I think I did see a few road diversion signs just further back. And we'll just get through all this. But if you're just going to go to Bali for a week or two, I personally wouldn't bother getting an international driver's license because you're probably just going to stay around wherever you're staying, around Ubud, around Seminyak or Legian, wherever you're staying. And you're probably just going to be doing short excursions. But if you're going to be traveling all across Asia, places like Thailand, or you're going to do some major excursions in Bali, or go shoot over to Lombok or whatever, uh, then definitely get one. Because it's usually on the open road that the cops will pull you over. Now be aware, if you go out hunting for a bike to rent, you'll find loads of places willing to rent you a bike. But most of the stuff, the small places on the streets, they're old bikes, worn out, been dropped a few times, not that great, got loads of Ks on the clock. So personally, I usually just get the hotel, or I, well, these days I stay at a homestay, I get the owner to organise it for me. That way, they'll turn up whenever you want, the, the bike will be delivered, and uh, I always seem to get much newer bikes, because obviously the reputation of the uh, hotel um, concierge, whatever you want to call it, or the homestay owner is at stake there, he's going to get you something quite good. And they're usually much newer bikes with just very few Ks on the clock. And all these bikes will be Scoopies or Hondas, all 115 cc's, 115 that's enough power to get you around the traffic clogged streets. Uh, I've always gone for the Honda, it's the Vario model. But on my last trip, I took a Scoopy as it was easier to clip on my camera because they had like handlebars and I could clip the camera on. Couldn't sort of get that on a Vario. And uh, back home, I ride a Vespa in New Zealand. So I really like the Scoopy as it's more of a sitting up position, just like riding the Vespa and a lot more comfortable on long trips. If you're renting for more than a few days, it should cost you around 60,000 rupiah a day. That's about $6 Australian. Make sure you try on and check the helmet that they supply and don't be afraid to send them back for a different one if it's too tight or too loose. The helmet's really important and it's included in the rental cost. Now usually the scooter is delivered with bugger all ga gas in it and um, always around about a quarter of a tank. So make sure you fill up when you see a street stall like this one. No, that's not vodka, that's petrol in vodka bottles. Now you usually play around about, uh, depending on the price of fuel at the time, but usually the going rate is about 10,000 rupiah a bottle, that's about a dollar for a litre. Um, locals, um, I've seen locals usually get it for around about 8 or 9, but it's bad for all difference, 10 cents. 
Some vendors will try and rip you off and try and charge you 20, 30,000 for a bottle, but uh, just remember, 10,000 is about the average going rate. There are a couple of service stations around and they're really good to fill up. If you come across one, there's one in Seminyak at the top on the way to Kirabakan. And also remember the gas tank is under the seat where you fill it up. Now there are a few major differences. Uh, oh, the other good thing about having your scooter delivered is that when you're um, leaving to go home, you just leave the bike at your accommodation at the agreed date and they'll pick it up. No hassle. There's a few major differences though to the way the Balinese drive to what you're probably used to. Uh, for instance, at intersections, the Balinese, uh, they merge across the lane and I'll try and put up a video just to show you that. So instead of going out, if you're turning right into the traffic and going out straight and letting everybody come, you, you veer off to the right and merge right across. Looks really, really dangerous, but it's really, really simple once you get used to it. Um, if you're on a speedy bit of road, like see on the main double highway to Sanur or Nusa Dua, or on your way to Uluwatu and you're clocking about 60 or 70 k's an hour, your horn becomes quite essential. You've always wondered, probably, well, check out this aeroplane. It, oh, I've just gone past it now. That aeroplane is where the left-hand turn for Changu is. And look, as looking, <laughs> I've missed it as usual. Um, yes, what was I saying? Yeah, oh yeah, about the horn. If you're on a fast bit of road and you're overtaking a car on the outside on the proper way, it's usually just one quick toot. That just lets the um, you know the driver know that you're coming down the driver's side to overtake. If you're overtaking on the inside. Don't forget, there's a much bigger blind spot for the driver. So it's two toots. Two toot. And he just knows there's somebody coming up the inside. I would always re recommend you follow a local rider when you're practicing who's going at a speed you're comfortable with. You can then watch them, how they navigate the roads and especially the busy intersections and just follow them for a bit until you get used to what they do. Lastly, what do you do if you're a bit too nervous to make the leap to renting your own scooter? Well, get yourself the latest Gojek app. The Grab, it's like a Grab Uber type app. Uh, it's Bali's rideshare app. I think Uber owns 50% of it, and it works really well. Really, really cheap if you want to get a scooter ride anywhere. But obviously, if it's a group of you, the car's going to be better. Uh, if there's a two of you, you can just get two scooters. But uh, it's a great way to learn and see how they drive while you're on the back of a Gojek scooter. Once you're feeling a bit more confident, go for it. And just practice by doing those very, very short trips. I'm sure you'll love it. So be careful on your scooter. Don't get too overconfident, as that's when mistakes can happen. But riding around Bali, on these roads, and exploring, with loads of things to see and find, you'll have a great time. So there you go. I think that's everything you need to know about renting a scooter in Bali. Well, we're still on the lookout for this Irish pub called the Plumber's Arms. We've been researching this online and apparently they uh, have the best Guinness in Bali. So we thought we'd stop there maybe for a bit of lunch and a couple of pints of Guinness before heading down to Changu. It's only about 10 minutes, 15 minutes from Changu. And uh, so you can see I'm just cruising along a little bit slowly now because it's somewhere up this road and uh, hopefully we'll find it soon.
at Beach Bums in Changu. We went in search of the Guinness at the, the most famous Irish pub in the whole of Bali. It took us like an hour to drive there on the bikes all the way nearly to Changu. And guess what? They had no Guinness. So that was off, so we just shot down the road to Old Men's just next door, Changu Beach, and this place called Beach Buns, where we're just going to have a bit of lunch. And it's a cool spot, cool spot. You see all the surface out there. Have a look around. Pretty cool. So, a little bit of lunch in Changu.